Okay, today's dissection is the arteries and veins of the uh, upper extremities and thorax. So we're doing the vessels that are above the diaphragm. And the first thing that we need to do is a muscle dissection along the left upper limb. We use the left because that's the side that the company actually injects the paint. So the left vessels are more likely to have uh, paint in their vessels. The right side, not so much. So <clears throat> we're going to go down the left. You don't dissect the right unless your left actually doesn't have any paint or if you really mess up badly. But I suggest you don't do that because the right is not likely to have paint and you need your dissection points. So uh, just like we've done along the neck and some other muscle places, you're going to do a light incision and then separate the tissue. Make sure that you're not cutting off any important vessels. Another light incision, separate the muscle, light incision, separate the muscle, light incision, separate the muscle. Now I can see a blue vessel down here. Those are going to be our veins and veins are more superficial than arteries so you're going to see them first and once you start seeing those vessels you're going to start being very careful going through this tissue. We do need an open passageway between the thoracic cavity and the arm so I'm going to start going through the muscle of the rib cage and uh, gently go between the tissue the costal cartilage of the ribs open up this passageway here like this and <clears throat> if you have any um, particularly large ribs that are sticking up through your dissection area just let me know and I'll come around with the bone cutters and cut them for you as you remove muscle you can feel free to take that away so it's out of your uh, dissection area and this first rib is giving me a little bit of trouble here there we go light incision move the tissue away light incision move the tissue away you can see that you've got that nice blue vessel there okay now another thing that you're going to have to do for this dissection is to remove the thymus okay so my cat has a fairly good thymus so I'm just gonna take that with my fingers and just gently tear it away from the thoracic cavity and that gland tissue will come right away and you don't need to worry about any of the tiny vessels that are coming away with it but you certainly don't want to remove any very large ones so I'm just stripping away the soft tissue now we have a good exposure of the vessels of the thorax that we're going to be identifying Okay. Now, <clears throat> a lot of the rest of the dissection is just going to be blunt dissection. Okay. I'm going to start with the removal of the fibrous pericardium off of the heart. So I'm just going to lift that up so I know I'm not cutting on the heart. And just keep opening that sac all the way down to the um, vessels above the heart. Open that up. Okay. I'm going to take my probe clean out some of this junk so I can see what I've got there like this this little blob of fat is always there Okay, even if you have a thin cat you're going to have that little blob of fat there alright now if your um, pericardial cavity is particularly gooky with all this congealed stuff you can feel free to take your cat over the sink again give him a little wash okay now we have that off of there. You can actually identify your pulmonary trunk which comes off of the top of the uh, anterior heart. Here you have an auricle of the heart. Your other auricle is over here, way down there. Okay, And between the two atria 
is going to be your anterior pulmonary trunk. And you can see as I push on this, it's hollow. That is an actual vessel. So that's a pulmonary trunk, and that would divide and go to each lung. Now for the pulmonary um, arteries and veins, you're going to do a dissection in between the heart and the lungs. Okay, so what you're going to do is use your scalpel as a scraping tool and scrape some of this lung tissue away. And what you're actually removing is the root tissue of the lung, which attaches it to the mediastinum. And the problem that we sometimes run into with the pulmonary vessels is that they may not always take up paint, and so sometimes we don't get to see what we want to see. Uh, now I'm just using my probe. I've got a nice blue vessel, and remember that going from the heart to the lungs is going away, and so those are going to be arteries. And in that situation, those vessels are carrying poorly oxygenated blood and so therefore they are arteries going away from the heart. But since they're poorly oxygenated, they're going to have blue bl uh, paint in them. So this is a pulmonary artery going from the heart to the lung. And this one down here that's pink is going to be a pulmonary vein because it's taking blood towards the heart, but since it just picked up oxygen at the lung, it's going to be richly oxygenated. Okay, now above the heart, we're going to try to find the um, aortic arch, and the aorta is going to leave the top of the heart, and blood is going to go up, and then over, and then down. Okay, so here is part of the arch down here going over and then eventually it'll go down behind the heart and become the descending aorta. Okay, so now we just need to come over here, keep moving this fibrous sac away from the heart and find where the aorta comes out the top of the heart. And here it is. And it's usually right behind that fat blob. So this is coming up, over, down. We've got our aortic arch right there. Now off of the aortic arch, you're going to have um, some branches. And remember in the cat, they only have two. They split off a little bit differently than the human. And I'm just using blunt dissection to clear this connective tissue away. And here are my two trunks, brachiocephalic trunk and my left subclavian. And then this large blue vessel here is my superior vena cava. Okay. And if you follow that brachiocephalic trunk up, open this up a little bit. We're doing this carefully as to not cut through our vessels. This brachiocephalic trunk is going to have three divisions in the cat. The first one, all the way to the right, is going to be the right subclavian because that's going to go under the clavicle and out to the arm. The next one to the left is going to be the right common carotid that will go up the neck. And the farthest one to the left, this branch here, is going to be our left common carotid up the left side of the neck. And then its own branch off of the aortic arch is the left subclavian. So you have right subclavian, right common carotid, left common carotid, and the left subclavian is its own branch off of the aortic arch. The only difference between what we're seeing here and what we have in the human is that this left common carotid has its own branch off of the aorta. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so that superior vena cava, brachiocephalic trunk, right subclavian, right common carotid, left common carotid, left subclavian, all off of the aortic arch.
Now you're going to find the descending aorta, and what you're going to do is move the left lung away from the body cavity, and down in here, you're going to just poke through that mediastinal pleura with your probe, blunt dissection, kind of like we did around the kidney, and you're just going to unwrap that descending aorta like that. And there you go. Okay. All right. Now we are going to do the azygos. So the azygos is under the right lung. Okay. And what you're going to do is lift the right lung all the way back and remove the same mediastinal pleura. Okay, here's that superior vena cava. And the azygos is going to be a blue large vein running along the right side of the thorax and will actually drain the blood from the intercostal vessels and so forth. And here it is. So you got this big blue branch called the azygos coming away from the superior vena cava, right there. Okay. Now your intercostals are going to be branches at the bottom of the thoracic cavity. And again, you're just removing some of that pleura. And anything along the ribs that is blue is going to be an intercostal vein. And anything along the ribs that is pink is going to be an intercostal artery. And my cat's injection wasn't terribly good. Don't really see many vessels that took up paint down there. Okay, so I'm gonna try the other side. And same thing, I'm just looking at the bottom of the thoracic cavity and looking for some pink and blue vessels that are in between the ribs. There's a pink one. That's an intercostal artery. Um, these ones up here, you can see their natural color, but didn't really take up paint. But anything that would be blue in some of the better cats will be a vein. Pink will be an artery. Okay, now we're going to start heading down the upper limb. So I've, I've cut that first rib and you can feel free to cut some of this rib cage out of your way so that you have some room to identify your vessels that are going down the left arm. So if you need me to, call me over and I'll um, cut through a couple of ribs for you. Otherwise, sometimes by now the ribs are soft enough that you can just use your scissors, but let me know. And I'm just going to cut this rib cage wall away like this so that I have a nice clear path down the upper limb. Okay, so what we need to do is identify the brachiocephalic veins. We're going to do veins first because they are more superficial. And once we've uncovered all the veins, arteries are easy. Getting this bone out of the way here. There we go. So again, most of this blunt dissection. You're going to um, just run this probe along the blue vessels that you've already exposed. This is a lymph node, this little bean thing. If you come across those, you can just gently tear them out. Not doing lymph nodes, okay. And so this vessel that is a branch off of the superior vena cava, is the brachiocephalic vein, and that's bringing blood from the upper limb and head down into the superior vena cava, which will lead it into the right atrium. Okay, now, I'm still just clearing this away, 
with my probe, just running it along the vessel, making it clean, like this. Now, when you get to the next branch, that is going to, from your brachiocephalic vein, you're going to have a subclavian vein. And the subclavian vein in the human is under the clavicle, hence the name subclavian. Then it ends at the split, and the split gives us cephalic vein, which goes down deep into the arm, and that's the one that comes out the other side and runs along the top of the arm, and that was the vessel that we were careful not to cut off when we skin the cats. And then this branch that stays more superficial is going to be the axillary vein because it goes through the axillary or armpit region. So again, I'm just running my probe along that, cleaning it up like this, removing the connective tissues and the muscle from over it, just like that. Okay. Now, I'm going to need to go through the um, cubit or the elbow region so that we can find the median um, cubital vein. So again, gentle muscle dissection, make a cut, push it away, make a cut, push it away, there we go. Okay, so these <clears throat> white stringy things we need to get out of the way, they're just nerves and you just get your probe under them and then clean them up just by running the probe back and forth. And then once you know that you have them away from the vessels you need to identify, just cut them off at each end so that they're out of your way and you're just left with nice blue and pink structures. So I didn't really do anything to have to find this artery. Once you uncover the vein, the artery is right next to it. We just got that <clears throat> nerve out of the way. Okay. Now, your left subclavian goes down here through the armpit region and is going to become, here he is, around that bend, is going to become the axillary artery after the vertebral artery. And the vertebral artery curls down from the subclavian, let's get this one out of the way, and goes up the neck and is actually the vessel that ends up at the base of the brain that we're learning on the brain model. This nerve wants to be in the way. This nerve is actually the phrenic nerve going to the diaphragm. Cut that out of the way. Alright, so it's going to be up here, right before the axillary region, and it's going to be a little pink loop that's going to go deep into the tissue and up the neck. And here it is. It's not very big. I'll try to get it out of this fat. Pink little loop right there. It's going to go down and up into the neck. After that vertebral artery, it's axillary artery. And your next big branch is going to go deep into the arm area and go along the scapula. And that is going to be your subscapular artery. And there, there it is. So that branch right here is going to go down deep into the brachial area and go to the scapula. So it's called subscapular. After that branch, it's simply called the brachial artery, and that's all you're doing with the arteries.
Now, just to get a couple more branches off of this vein, I'm going to open this up through the chest cavity. That's a big lymph nodes in this guy. Let's tear those out. These are bronchopulmonary. There's some more thymus. Okay. Alright, so you're going to need to find the jugular veins, and there's an internal and an external. By the way, this is the internal thoracic vein, and that should still be attached to the thoracic cavity. You're just going to remove it from that wall, leave it dangling, internal thoracic vein. And there's also an artery along there. And my artery looks like we cut it off when we open the thoracic cavity, so I'm not going to worry about that. I'll make note of those cats that still have theirs. Okay, so here's our two brachiocephalic veins going to the vena cava. And the next branch off of that is going to go up the neck. Now my cat had had his head removed, so I only have the very beginning of these because of the <coughs> dissection of the head. And remember that these jugulars are named for their position, not for their size. Okay, so the one that... Let's put it here is this little tiny guy closer to the midline this guy internal farther away from the midline external so you have brachiocephalic vein internal jugular external jugular and then from there to the split is your subclavian vein then the split gives you your cephalic which is the one that comes out the other side on the arm and then axillary. Axillary is going to split down here at this big branch. Right there. That's your brachial vein. And after the brachial branch, you have basilic. And then that would give rise to your median cubital through the cubit, which connects to your cephalic. Okay. Now some of these little vessels we aren't identifying. And if you want to be able to cut them off, Call me over, I'll let you know which ones they are and that they're safe to cut off so that you don't have them getting confusing on what you're supposed to identify. I'm just removing some of this muscle from the neck area like that. Open this up, make it a little easier to see everything. There's those jugulars I was showing you. Closer to the midline, internal. Farther from the midline, external jugular. <coughs> 